Morning campers, hope you're okay. I always say morning campers because that's just a thing I say, but then I realise it's actually two minutes past 12. Sorry for the uh, slightly late start. Another techie glitch, oh, one of many. I had a complete nightmare trying to stream on a different channel this morning. Um, anyway, there we go. We're in. Right, I'm going to press on then. Fantastic. Well, if, um, if you're here for the first time... Um, uh, this is the, we're in the Trouble Kids group. We've been doing live streams weekly since I think early May. It took us a little while to get going, but it struck me that during lockdown this might be a thing that'd be useful. So, um, so here we are. So you can catch these in uh, YouTube as well later if you want. Um, so if you're new to this. Welcome on board. My name's uh, Johnny Matthew. I'm a social worker and a criminologist, and um, this is one of my many things because I enjoy it. But um, uh, it's not all about me. There's tons of expertise in the Troubled Kids group on Facebook. So if you'd like to be in on that and join us, please just click through, find, uh, just search Troubled Kids group in Facebook. Ask to join. Please answer the questions. All the questions. There's only three. Uh, basically, what's your interest in troubled kids? What's the biggest challenge you've got? And do you agree to our kind of group rules, which again are really basic, but uh, you won't get in if you don't answer all the questions. So please do that. Um, I'm spending a lot of time this week messaging people who've asked to join who haven't answered all the questions saying, please answer the questions. So uh, it'd be great not to have to do that so much. Um, there we are. Well, um, I think that means we can go to a theme tune. <laughs> there we are. There we go, that's a clap. For you guys, thank you for finding time to um, to plug in uh, and join me on here. I've been playing about. We have another view. <laughs> and we've actually got a camera too. Because I just thought it humanises. The only problem is that I realise that when I'm streaming after. If I put camera two on, I have to suck it in a bit. Um, but there we are. Uh, good to see you all. Um, right. Let's have a look. Let's see who's in. Hi, Jackie, Kelly. Nicola, Sean, Gaynor, hi Melanie, do you like that one? I did, I did on and on about this, I'm doing half a day's training, straight after this at half past one, Trish and Dusty and I from TRM Academy are, um, are doing a half day's taster training for the TRM, um, which will be an online course soon, because we've had loads of demand for it, and um, so we've we've written it, and we've, we've, we've done it before, but we've written it up, and we are... So hopefully in the next two or three weeks that will be available online. But we're doing a bit of training later. I thought, oh, is it a bit, it's a bit unprofessional to have a Superman T-shirt on? <laughs> if people don't know me, they're absolutely going to think I'm a, a, some kind of egotist if I wear this. But I thought, you know what? I am here in box room studios with the window there and the door there. And um, I thought, well, this is this is normal. This is me, and I'm inviting you to come and. Uh, be in my little office space so I thought blow it I'm going to wear my Superman shirt anyway I'm glad you like it Mel um, let's have a look hearing loud and clear thank you hi Alfie hi Pam Tarina Colin hi Kev don't worry mate I was late in I had another slight techie glitch Karen Cheryl hi hello John likes a t-shirt great oh well that's alright I feel better now it's a slight moment of tension. There's the iconoclast in me says, sod it, I'm going to wear whatever I want. But then there's always that little bit, isn't there, when you spend your life in professional settings where you kind of think, maybe I should think more about it. But there we go. So I'm glad it's all right. Hi, Lise. Rainy Swansea. It is not raining here at the minute, but it's pretty grim. It's looking like it's uh, threatening. Uh, hi, Mandy. Jackson, uh, Caroline, Joanna, Rihanna, hello. Lovely. Well, it's great to have you in. Hi, Sheil. Um, Okie dokie. Now then, where have I got to? Um, right. So, we stay on because um, I haven't got a huge amount of questions this week, actually, so it might be shorter, but we'll see how we go. But I'm giving away a copy of Betsy Dutieri's book, 
Um, I don't know if you can see that on there. Betsy de Thierry's book, Teaching the Child uh, on the Trauma Continuum. It's a total cork of this. Um, I really like it. It's, it's just full of um, really good stuff. I'll give you a quick, a quick run through. Foundations of Understanding Trauma, a quick look at the brain, attachment, resilience, how children cope with it. And then a lot of really good stuff um, about trauma symptoms, complex trauma, being overwhelmed, hypervigilance, memory. Um, and then what is great about Betsy's stuff is she takes you straight into, OK, this is a book about teaching this kid. What do you need to do? And what I love about it is it answers so many of those questions we've all got about, yeah, I kind of get the theory, but what on earth am I going to do with this child here and now? So I'll be giving that away at the end. Um, congrats to Sheila, who won the uh, Looking After Number One book last week. I'm sorry, Sheila, and I'm very, very sorry, Diane and Lynn. I still haven't had, I ordered, I know how much these books weigh because I, I tend to give a lot of them away. <laughs> and post them out to people i'll have a conversation i think i'll just send them a book to encourage them so i do so i know how much they weigh and i know what the stamps should be so i ordered the stamps easy as anything on the post office website they still haven't come but bear with me they're still there i've got them all enveloped up here for you three and ready to go so the same will go for betsy's book whoever wins that um today just also to say any of you who <coughs> uh, missed most of you will probably have missed the ask me anything session that we had on friday i had that um scheduled in at noon on friday because i wanted to have um i wanted a session where we could just free roll really and not be um concerned overly about prepared questions i like to prepare answers to these questions a little bit at least so that i'm not flying totally blind and can be most useful to you guys but um we had the um self-care course the launch period to the self-care course was coming to an end uh, on monday evening i couldn't stream monday so i thought if i go live friday and if people have got questions um we can do that as it was there weren't really any questions about self-care we touched on it but there was a um a, a really sort of interesting question and what i felt useful just thinking about how to answer it about children who hoard food um, you know, kids who will take food, steal food, hide food uh, in the house. You, uh, foster cares will be familiar with this as a bit of a thing. Um, and, you know, some kids can go through that anyway, but kids in the care system can go through it and it can be quite a big deal. So we looked at that. So for those of you who haven't um, seen that, if you in the YouTube channel, look at the uh, Ask Me Anything session um and you'll be able to see that and in the description under there i've put the time stamps so that you can if you don't want to watch the whole thing because they're quite long some of these they're an hour generally or 45 minutes i think we were on friday but if you wanted to have a look at the let's let's jump to the bit where they talk about hoarding food kids who hoard food then you can look in the description the time stamp is there you can just fast forward the um the video and you can get straight to it so uh so if you didn't see that um feel free to have a look because that that might be that might be something that you're interested in that we we may or may not um covered on here we also looked a bit about finishing well and good endings with children um endings to placements endings of schools and school transitions endings of pieces of intervention work that kind of stuff endings generally and how to finish well but as i say you can get those on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, please uh, click through and subscribe so that we can make sure um, you get these. Right then, let's get into it. So posts from this week. Just to say, if there are any burning questions you guys have got, feel free to pop them in the comments. Um, so if um, if you've got questions while we are ongoing, um, please feel free just to drop them in the comments because I, I, if I can and we've time at the end, I'll get into those. Um, I'm going to move across now, share my screen with you and look at some of the comments from this week from the group. Um, the first one 
is this one leanne palmer um shared this one about aces the brain um and the rest of the body it's again it's from the harvard center uh it's the harvard center harvard university center for the developing child it's fantastic and this is really looking about it's called connecting the brain to the rest of the body i'll zoom in on this little picture here but it's talking about how trauma uh the impact of problems during development can cause uh, and link closely to not just brain development but to the development of the other systems within the body and this is a great infographic here they're very good the harvard center on sharing superb uh, infographics so again have a look at that um particularly of particular importance i think is this um the the neuroendocrine system here um because that's uh that speaks to the hormone imbalance and the problems that come through that it also speaks to the uh, hyper arousal stuff that oversensitive alarm activation systems and increased startle responses that kids get so you get an overreaction and, and all that kind of thing and it also feeds into the very somatic deeply physical um uh experiences that kids get whereas we experience them as emotional and that has a physical element too it can not only be overwhelming for these children emotionally it can be very physically um, powerful as well and difficult uh, to cope with so um that was that one then uh, just to say also we talked last week about so or the week before i believe in the live stream about self-care tips and tricks just to help keep you going that was in answer to a question but just to let you know i've turned that into a blog post three principles for good self-care be deliberate be determined be diligent Four strategies about capturing the good stuff, keeping cards and messages, good company and laughter. So I've, I've outlined those and there's some links in there and you can get that um, on my blog, johnnymatthew.com slash blog. So that was just a quick thing by way of reminder. Uh, also, Martin Hatton, um, hi Mark, if you're around or you're listening later, um, shared this one. He also shared the uh, the Aces Brain and Body one, actually. Um but Martin shared this one about the window of tolerance. And I just wanted to dwell on this for a second because um, it's something that's around and you may or may not be aware of it. But um, I think it's really handy to know about. So it's this idea that we have a window of tolerance. In other words, uh, a kind of sphere of operation within which we're OK. And there may be little stresses or you know, little things that go wrong, moments of unpredictability or unexpected events and things. But we're OK because they're within our window of tolerance. But then it's recognising that we all have slightly different windows of tolerance um, and that children who've really struggled and, and particularly children who've experienced trauma. And, and you can see from the title, this is about how trauma influences the window of tolerance. Um, and... It's to say, if you look at this, the smaller picture on the left there, the big one, the window of tolerance is, is in yellow. And above and below that, we have problem sort of um, arousal. And, and, and I guess the first thing to recognise is that people, children, uh, we're interested in, um, some children will have a quite a narrow or a small window of tolerance. The number of things places people situations that they can tolerate is relatively small um, and once you're outside of that you, you you get problem presentations and behavior and things from children um, and I think it's helpful to think if you've got a child where there's lots of real big behaviors lots of dysregulation and and, 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 and problem presentations like that you may be dealing with quite a narrow window of tolerance and and above the window in red there, it says hyper. And it, it, this this um, speaks to that idea that for some kids, when they're outside what they can tolerate, things are overwhelming, that they, they'll have a hyper arousal. So that's to do with anxiety, might be very angry sort of behavior, but it's a sense of feeling overwhelmed really and out of control. Um, and what your body wants to do then is to fight against that or run away. 
Um, and like all problem behaviors and responses like this, it's not something you choose to do. Those reactions take over. Back to the stuff we just talked about from the um, uh, from the Harvard uh, Center on the Developing Child, where you know the brain and body becomes overwhelmed, the emotions become overwhelmed, and you get big body and emotion behavioral responses. And for these kids, it'll be an outward, angry, out of control, feeling overwhelmed sort of stuff. Uh, and we're going to touch about this on this again a little bit later on when we talk about kids who break things. Um, but then underneath the window of tolerance is, is this is in blue where it says hypo arousal, hypo for low arousal. Um, so this is kids will, they may, it looks a bit sort of um, dissociative. Uh, it's kind of numbed down. Kids will look like they've tuned out completely and they're not there. They may withdraw, become very low mood or introverted and disconnect from what's going on in the room and the people and the conversations that are going on around because the overwhelm and the way they react to it causes them to respond like that and their body wants to shut down. So in the hyper arousal group, the high arousal group, it's a more explosive for the hypo or low arousal group. It's a, it's a more closed down. And then on the right here, you can see that we've got a much wider window of tolerance there. The yellow is bigger. And they're making the point that when the people we work with, in our case, children work with somebody who's helping them to deal with their arousal, then that can widen the window of tolerance that we, we can be there to help them, which in itself widens the window because we're kind of sharing our bigger window of tolerance with kids so they can operate within that as long as we are present. But there is also the point that if the interventions and the relationship, which is key, obviously, works well and the child learns and grows and develops positively through that, then their own window of tolerance will widen and the number of things, people, places, situations, emotions that they can tolerate will grow as well. So again, that allows them um, a greater sphere of normal operation where they're feeling OK. So thanks. Um, thanks for sharing that, Matt. Uh, I'm grateful. I think it's a, it's a cracker. Worth saying, incidentally, in the description, I've put a link to uh, you'll see at the bottom here, this is NICAM. Um, I've put a link because there's a number of infographics of theirs that are very good. I'm going to be looking at their website in a couple of weeks' time because I, I like it. Uh, and I've, I've bought and been through a couple of their courses as well. Um, so there we go. Uh, that's that bit. So, But in terms of the questions, this is just really to say that... Um, <clears throat> These are just my take on things. I am not an expert in everything by a very uh, by a very wide margin. Um, but th this is my take. It's just my opinion from my own experience and expertise. Um, but that's limited. Um, I, and I, I really like the fact that we share this time. People get in the comments. And, uh, and also later, it triggers conversations that we have in the group. So feel free, please, to chip in on that. But it's just to say again, if you're new to this, and a reminder to all of us, really, that this is not a, um, a kind of agony uncle alternative to decent professional help. Um, it's useful, hopefully, for professionals. But if you need help for yourself, or if you need help for yourself as a professional dealing with a particular case... Please don't rely solely on this. If you're in difficult situations with a clinical importance, where there's risk to the child or somebody else or to you, then let me urge you to get that professional help and not see this um, as an alternative. Hopefully it will help you, um, but it's not a fix. If you need it, book in, see a professional and do it that way. So I just wanted to say that to cover me, but also to cover you and above all to ensure we do due diligence really so the kids get the right help. Uh, that they need. Lovely. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, I've only got one question, so unless somebody else um, puts something in the uh, comments, uh, we'll answer this one, and then that'll be us done when we've done our book giveaway. So this is from Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. Bless you. I really appreciate you getting on and answering questions. Yeah, it was just you uh, asking questions. It was just you this week, so 
Uh, I feel even more guilty that you haven't had your book now. <laughs> anyway, here we go. This is a really f fab question. It says, um, hi all, B bit of a strange one. The young person we look after tends to destroy things. In the past month, he smashed his iPad, PlayStation, toys, etc. This has been an ongoing issue since he came to us three years ago, to live with us three years ago. The significant attachment, aces and trauma issues. It's almost as if he doesn't allow himself to have anything he enjoys or is attached to. Great question, Lynn. Thank you. Um, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one, not least experiencing it uh, as you are, Lynn, and, uh, uh, and others who will have been through this as well. It's common, isn't it, from children from backgrounds of this kind? I mean, you, you mention uh, attachment issues, aces in this kid's life, trauma issues. I mean, it, poor kid's not, not at the best of um, start. So I'm going to kind of look at this a little bit in a in a couple of different ways i'm going to just i want to look about what just touch briefly on some things about why this may happen and then uh look at um responding to that and then some kind of proactive things that might help to uh keep a lid on it or to avoid it happening if it looks like it's beginning to emerge and you begin to see it oh coffee is great um so why do they do it? Well, there's a whole pile of things here, isn't there? As you know, I mean, it's um, it can be obviously it's a it can be for some kids a uh, an issue of regulation, self reg, just being able to understand and manage their feelings, and I guess all that stuff we've just talked about. If kids find themselves outside of their window of tolerance, um, these kids will tend to be in the hyper, the high end arousal types. Uh, it's not that they choose to be like that. It's that that's a reaction. It's overwhelmed. It's angry. It's outwards. It's bouncy. They want to. They want to. It's fight and flight. It's it's full of energy and muscle tension. Um, so that's really difficult for kids to deal with. And um, one of the issues, of course, is that the you know breaking stuff can actually compound the very thing that's inducing that stuff in the first place, and the breaking things can induce even more. Um, difficult feelings it can kind of add to the stuff they've got to try and contain in this window and they can't and they break out and then they get more negative stuff so uh, you can get a kind of cycle developing for some children you know they feel a certain way they're overwhelmed they break something then they feel things about having broke some broken something and that adds to the difficult feelings um, really tricky age obviously can affect the sense of value that kids have got for things, you know, an appreciation of money and cost as a general idea is a thing. Kids won't get that much before the age of seven, eight, nine. They start to get it. But when that really kind of more complex cognitive awareness starts to to really kick in um, and kids can think backwards, they can think and analyze in the moment, they can separate from emotion a little bit and they can project forward then they can have a sense of cost. Somebody's had to do something to get the money to buy this. I've broken it, and now going forward, that's got implications. Well, if you're very young kids, then they're not going to have that. So it's not going to be a kind of cognitive thought thought response in that sense. Um, but then older kids in overwhelm will do it anyway, even though they can do that. Um, that cognitive work. So age can affect it. These kids, exactly as we've just talked about in the window of tolerance, may just have a low tolerance for frustration and anger, or it can be very um, pent up. Um, and I think it's also not just that kids have that a small window of tolerance, if you like, but kids may also have conditions thinking obviously of um, ADHD, autistic spectrum disorders, learning disabilities, um, and obviously things like attachment issues, and particularly where there's neglect and attachment issues, low stimulation early on, presentations can look like these kind of more pathological disorders, ADHD, ASD, but nevertheless, then they may not be that, but the functioning is very similar. So again, that we need to bear that in mind, that there may be just issues of kicking against whatever's close, 
kids like stuff like that gadgets and things to be close so when they kick they kick against what's close um so bearing in mind conditions um they could be exactly as you suggested lynn there could be this question about well i do i really deserve nice things and it's just heartbreaking that kids you know feel they don't they don't deserve it but if they've never been led to believe that they do or that really it's not even about deserving um then if you've got those kind of identity and self-concept problems then um things that threaten that or make that difficult then can become become targeted some kids will take a passive aggressive approach to uh to kind of taking revenge or a kind of payback if they get browned off with us as carers or professionals or parents they may surreptitiously sneakily break stuff that's ours things they know that's valuable um that clearly isn't the case from what you're saying uh lynn because it's his stuff it's stuff that affects him um but some people may come across that it can be a power struggle you know teens will push against the boundaries that's but that's their job they're on the transition between dependent child and independent adult and in between it becomes a bit of a power struggle between those who've looked after you completely as a, a dependent child and then have to let go of you increasingly as a more dependent teenager and young adult we kick against them maybe they don't let go of some things as quick as we want maybe they're holding on too tight we experience that as being a bit over controlling or whatever it might be so again tricky stuff but time of life is important knowing that uh, not just conditions age cognitive capacity but onset of pubescence and that kind of major brain restructure stuff that's going on at that point and the identity stuff that comes to the fore at that point and the transition from child to adult is going on at that point um so you know the stuff that they break will sometimes play a part uh, in all that they need the firm boundaries around that I, I it's not a you know if kids are able to get consequences and they're older and we think that it is that power struggle teensy thing or that revengey thing sneaky passive aggressive breaking stuff valuable to us thing then there needs to be a firm boundary for that and natural and consequences for that which i'll come on to in a little while i think also for some kids it can just be a venting after they have been out in the world, school, play, whatever it might be, and um, they come back in and they've held it in, they've been controlled maybe and regulated in a kind of suppressed way, and then boom, it goes. Um, and it, it's triggered by something that won't work on their phone or they, they lose a life in a game online or they can't get online and watch a Twitch feed because... The bandwidth isn't up to it and everybody's using the internet because they've just gone on for where something and they trigger and they fly boom it can just be a venting thing so those are kind of a whole load of things there about about why kids might do it just a quick word about responding to it when it happens um i think and this is this is me it's my bias i do think we need to be careful about getting too strong up too strung out about consequences the need always to affect consequences um absolutely consequences can apply and can be a really vital part of the learning process and um, particularly for kids who've got the maturity to kind of handle that and understand cause and effect and things like that um but for all the reasons we've just talked about above you know immaturity delayed cognitive development issues of neglect issues of neglect and then children with conditions learning to say sd adhd that kind of thing then we need to be very careful because consequences are a not going to be understood uh by those kids quite so well and certainly are not going to be effective a behaviorist approach to some of those kids isn't going to cut the mustard so we need to be aware of that however consequences as we've said can be a key bit of it so i think tailoring any consequences to the relevant conditions of the child everything you know about them is really important so rather than ask what's the best consequence we need to ask first of all is a consequence or are consequences a part of my options here not the only one but are they part of the options i've got to help this kid um, and there may be issues in the child and your knowledge of them that means it's not a part but that's fine it's valid so go with that 
Um, I think also we need to bear in mind natural consequences that children, if they break stuff, like Lynn has described, I mean, Lynn, Lynn was saying, um, you know, he's broken his iPad, PlayStation and his toys. Well, that's important because there are, there are natural consequences to him of having broken stuff that he that he loves that he likes to play with so again um you know there is that sense of you've broken it so you've lost it and that in itself can be can be a, a, a very effective consequence and for some children who may struggle with complex thinking things through they will have a sense of i did this therefore in a sense i've got it coming and even if they can't work that out here they will have an emotion linked to that and one of the things we can help them to understand is that you feel this way because you broke something you loved and you liked and that's hard and i would feel the same if i'd done that in fact i have made mistakes in the past where i've thought oh that was daft because now i feel even worse than i felt before and helping kids to understand that um i do think it's important to keep our own emotions in check when we're responding to this it can be very uh utterly absolutely frustrating when kids break stuff that we've bought or that's valuable to us or is ours um and we haven't got an endless um pot of cash you know i mean um theresa may was right there, there is no money tree um you know that that's just really difficult so again keep our emotions in check uh, I'll talk a little bit about what, what we do that. Oh, no, I'm gonna, I'll mention it now. So I'm not saying hide your emotions. I'm not saying have an emotionless response or an unemotional response. But I do think we need to be mindful that kids who do these things are in a very florid, um, or potentially overwhelming emotional state. If we then laid them down, it's like the... It's like the bag lady carrying too much stuff and then we come along with a heavy suitcase of our emotions and just add that to their burden. Well, that clearly isn't going to help. So um, we need to be wary of that. But I do think kids need to know that we feel it. I do think that it's valuable and valid and important, actually, that kids know that, that, that we're naffed off about this, <laughs> that this is our home and our stuff. And I'm not really... this. I'm not up for this. This is not good. I don't like this. So I think we need to beware of inducing shame in kids by loading them with even more emotions because part of the emotion after they've broken something will be their own shame anyway. If we add to that by saying you've really hurt me and I'm really upset and it's kind of unbridled dumping of our emotions on them, that's problematic. But I do think we can say, do you know, that makes me feel sad, that, um, because. And we just let them know it's there and then move past it because our job is to help them deal with their stuff. Now, part of their stuff is our stuff. But I think giving them a quick peep into it rather than dumping a heavy load on them is, is, is the important balance to make. So um, beware of shame. And also for these kids, after an incident like that, they may need, they will need to reconnect with us. They'll have a sense of the, this thing they've done has put a distance between us. Um <clears throat> So they're going to need us to reconnect. So one of the reasons, again, for saying, yeah, oh, that makes me feel X, Y, Z, is that that's valid. It's part of the equation. But we need to go past it because we then need to reunite, reconnect, get the attachment relationship in place, pour some concrete into that secure base to hold them, help them come out of hyper arousal into their window of tolerance again. And our presence is key to that. Now, if our presence is overwhelmed by our own emotions, we become a toxic presence that adds to the stuff they've got to deal with and uh, shuts down the window of tolerance even further. So it's, I think that's why that's important. Um, uh, so I'm just popping on really quick. Helen is just saying, hi, Helen. I have to say, I looked after the child Lynn is referring to overnight. No matter what I did, um, he lashed out and threw things. Swearing just seemed to be in a constant rage, very difficult behaviour at point to point to the the other children in the house who were afraid to come out of their rooms. Uh, I applaud Lynn and her husband for the work they've done. The commitment is out of this world. Well, absolutely. Amen to that. No question. I think that's interesting, the constant throwing of things. That's very early stage behaviour. 
my uh, colleague, Dr. Tricia Skuse, clinical psychologist, who's partner with me in the TRM Academy, um, talk, talks about this quite a bit and, and, and has taught me really this idea that when kids throw things a lot, same as when things are very oral and they spit a lot or they put things in their mouth a lot, this really early stage development is called casting, that throwing stuff. And, and when children are doing that, we need to be thinking about that key question we keep coming back to. What age and stage of development would this child need to be for this behavior to be normal? Um, and the answer is probably you're talking about a child who would sit in a high chair for their meals. So they're very young. You're talking somewhere between a year and two years old, maybe a year, 18 months old. And if that, that's when kids will chuck stuff, they'll just grab a handful of peas and chuck them because they feel frustrated. Now, if you place that child in a neglectful environment with high, high aces and traumatic experience subsequent to that early development, kids will struggle in their ability to regulate mind, body and emotion such that they revert to that early stage behaviour and will chuck stuff. So if you see that, think, I'm dealing with an 18-month-old, I'm dealing with a year-old, I'm dealing with a two-year-old. What do they need from me? And what they don't need is us to dump all our emotions on them. They need us to let them know that with a look or whatever, or verbally maybe, if they're up for that. Bearing in mind, when you're in a rage, you don't clock verbal and cognitive information clearly at all. That stuff is dialed down. So a look in the face might do it. And then there needs to be the acceptance and the grace and the kindness. So that's, that's a bit about responding. That's a lot more than I intended to say. So uh, I will cut to the the last bit of this. So we've talked about why kids do it. We've talked a little bit about responding. So I just want to talk about um, this idea that we need to teach kids proactively about anger, really, and their feelings. Um, so it goes down to really basic things like, do they know the rules? Make sure that they know the rules about how to treat things. They may never have been taught how to treat things. They may not be aware that things um, have their place and that things might be fragile, might not understand the notion of fragility, uh, as an example. Um, make sure they know how to treat things. Um, this is what you can do with this. This is what you can do with this. Uh, this is what is okay. If you do this, actually that's not okay because it's going to break it. And you do this in calm moments, obviously. Make sure they know they can ask for help and they know how to ask for help. Sometimes kids break things, they're trying to deal with it and they lose it and they throw it and it's broken. And part of the interruption for that is kids knowing that there are people here who know how to deal with this stuff and it's okay for you to ask um, <clears throat> and it, it, to try and intervene in a, an intermediate stage before it gets broken. You can you can go for help. Um, things like have an anger thermometer uh, or a, a numerical scale, you know, one to ten. You know, one is not angry at all. Ten is I've never been this angry before. And five is I'm feeling pretty annoyed and could do with your help or whatever. And and use this and use it about yourself. You know, this happened to me once. and I felt this angry. I felt eight angry about that. Really very angry. Um so teaching kids like that, it's a way of helping them to express the bigness of something that's really hard to find words for. And the fact that I use the word bigness <laughs> is probably an interesting um, illustration of that very point. How do you describe the bigness of what you feel? I think the other thing is we need to help kids link the emotion to what the body does. Um, I used to have kids sometimes in therapy, I'd get them to lie on the floor, put three or four pieces of flip chart and I'd draw around their body shape and then we'd do an exercise where we'd put post-it notes or toys on their body at different points of their body and that could be anything from feeling really angry, um, I used to do it with teenagers about sexual arousal or um, helping kids to express what happened during instances of abuse or um, put something on their head if they're confused and they don't understand it, something on their tummy if they feel upset or unwell. And helping kids to make links between body and emotion. And there, there are ways that you can you can do that. You can do it with a little um, a little worksheet and just quickly draw draw uh, an outline of a body and, and just talk a bit about that and link to feelings. Because again, those sometimes the body will start to feel things before you get that emotional eruption. Particularly for kids who've learned to suppress it either because they're with angry violent people 
so they can't express or they've been neglected so particularly the severely neglected kids who may have expressed initially like babies do but then because nobody comes and responds and doesn't help them with that doesn't co-regulate that they turn that stuff in and they learn to be alone in it so helping them to express in a safe way thermometer chart body maps can be helpful teaching kids how to calm down mindfulness breathing exercises that lisa friends's caress model that uh, is in the group and you'll you'll find the link to that on the uh, i think the second or third live stream that we did can be really helpful that thing about helping them to it so the caress model is that um you communicate alternatively and then release endorphins and then self-soothe and teaching kids to do these three stage things can can help also if we know things happen at certain times of day let's avoid those times of day trigger people situations combinations of events um lynn I'm, I'm i'm assuming that you are caring foster caring for this 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 child this young person then your diary will help with that and again you you and helen could have a can have a natter and twist the lens on that and get some clarity if there are there may not be but if there are circumstantial event situations that trigger that and you, you can avoid those or you can be proactive about that help kids have strategies to cope in advance i suppose is the thing there couple of things to finish then obviously we don't want to reward this kind of behavior we, we need to give attention when kids are calm uh be very deliberate in that rather than giving all the attention and focus and communication when we're when we're dealing with an event don't associate anger with getting their own way or receiving nice things and treats and things i know you know this but i'll just put it out there because it's a useful reminder avoid violent media if you can try and keep kids away from games that's bloody shooting killing all that stuff now games are always stimulating and arousing more in a hyper sense than an O sense so they are they're uppy they're energetic they're movement oriented the very notion of having to move in the game is is intrinsic to it but the nature of it let's keep away from stuff if we can and urge kids do some research get online look for stuff get yourself a twitch account you don't have to do anything, but you can just look. Twitch is full of people playing games. Look for games that look lower key. Find out what they're called and then maybe suggest those. Kids kids will be on Twitch if you're not. So if you can, if your kids looking after kids and be professional, you need to be on Twitch. You need to be watching because kids are all over that uh, now. And it's going to... Um, It'll probably overwhelm YouTube at one point. There was a point a couple of weeks ago where there were more people on planet Earth watching Twitch live game streaming than were watching all other methods of television put together so uh, including netflix and amazon prime and streaming and things like that so that's where it's at I need to get on twitch and, and understand that i'm just feeling my way in that a bit now um so don't reward things like that uh don't give in easy for me to say sitting here in a superman t-shirt with no trouble kids chucking stuff at me <laughs> but don't give in it's really important don't don't assimilate the behavior of that oh, do you know what we just put up with this now continue to be proactive looking at ways of dealing with it it's not acceptable keep making that clear keep reinforcing the boundaries and so on and then lastly to finish on a positive let's reward and praise good behavior i think the biggest praise should be reserved for those times when kids come and ask for help when kids come and say i'm just feeling a bit angry my my daughter uh, is, well, she's 15 now, but when she was younger, she she used to talk about having a washing machine tummy when she was feeling upset about it. My, oh, God, I like a, my wash, tummy's like a washing machine because she was watching a washing machine. And my tummy feels like that. And so she, she if, if a kid comes up and says something like that or just comes up for a hug or comes up and asks for help with anything, let's Larry, thank you for asking for help. I'm always here if you need me. Now, that can become a pain, and kids will use that to their own advantage to get chocolate biscuits and all the rest of it. <laughs> but actually, that's a really key message, praising appropriate behaviour. And so I would give specific rewards for that kind of behaviour. And again, you can use you know all the things you know about reward charts, star charts, um, reward tokens, whatever it might be, You know anything like that that's really useful. Major points for coming and saying that they're angry particularly. Uh, and they want to break stuff. You can say, listen, it's okay. If you come up to me and you want to break something, give it to me and say, can you keep that for a minute? Because I'm really going to break it. I feel like I want to break it. And then you can put it down, give them a hug, 
calm, do the self-reg thing, sit with them while they play or whatever, and then be on your way again. Um, so be ready then to proactively help them calm. So there we go. Uh, that was much longer than I thought, but I thought we'd spend a bit of time on it because it's the only question we had in the comments. So that's a bit about why they do it, responding to it in the moment, but then creating a proactively teaching environment about uh, helping kids to understand anger and feelings. So there we go. So just say quick, if you're watching this on YouTube, get on, give us your uh, subscription and we'll get, make sure you get these. I'm going to give you a quick whistle stop through a... Uh, a website um, so let me just share the screen with you this is and the links in the description this is the BPS website the British Psychological Society now there's huge bits of this that are not open to mere mortals like us who are not doctor something but actually there's some good material in here explanatory stuff here about what is psychology if you need to find a psychologist there's a register there you can put where you are what you need it for and um if you're interested in becoming one obviously you can get information the a to z of psychology just click this it's quite interesting because here they are they have a term of the day stress and then you give you a bit of a definition and then there's a link to the another little internal website about that and then there's an a to z stuff here like anxiety um you know and just sort of things that are um that may be useful just to look at i was just looking to see if there's one on um anger but there isn't <laughs> but there might be one on rage adhd look at stuff there access to the nhs website relative to that all kinds of stuff self-harm so there we go i just thought i'd let you know about that that's the british psychological society and for that bit click on the a to z of psychology they also and there's a link in the description they also have their research digest here which is a bit like a blog really and a kind of repository of useful stuff so that's interesting so um it's just what well, it's like my web page actually you can click down um psychedelic drugs and social distancing working out with friends how that's helpful it's very broad but if you want to drill down the there is a categories list here this end purple box here and you can go through here and there are all kinds of stuff in here personality cognition social mental health development emotion uh brain so we'll look at brain just see what they got on that. that's my stuff that love that there you go all kinds of stuff. Parents are more synchronized patterns of brain activity when they're together. That's a lovely, look at that. Two um, uh, the, the neurotransmitters there, two synapses and neurotransmitters jumping in between them. Fantastic. It's interesting that when we talk about brain connection, there actually is no connection. The connection is the chemical neurotransmitter that jumps the gap, which is why body chemistry is important in understanding regulation and emotion. But anyway, that's a whole other bag of tricks so there we go i uh, just wanted to show you that because um there's some good stuff on there and i thought that might might be useful bps um links are in the description there's a blog there's a podcast on there as well actually um so there we go okay so uh, if you guys have got questions for future things um please put those in the comments um Right, I'm going to do my book giveaway. I'm giving away this. This is a copy of Betsy Dottieri's Teaching the Child on the Trauma Continuum. Um, it's an absolute corker. All Betsy's stuff are a corker. I harbour this, I harbor this um, wish that I might be able to get her on one day and interview her. So I'd quite like to do that. So I'm going to make contact with Betsy at some point. But I'm giving that away today. So... While I tell you what we're doing next week, if you would like to be in the book giveaway, just put me in the comments now. Just type the word me in the comments and I'm just going to Twitter for a minute, tell you about next week and have a slurp of my coffee while you put me in. And then I'm going to scroll through the comments and um, let you know who's won it. So where you go, put me in um, and we'll go from there. Cool. Uh, just to say then for next week, um, I thought it was this week, but I was wrong. Next week is Youth Work Week. Um, now, I came out of Youth Work um, 
and I, when I came out as a, as a volunteer, actually, I went to a youth club and I, uh, church youth club. I stayed in that, become one of the, became one of the, the helpers, kind of volunteers, older kids who volunteer. And then I volunteered when I left the youth club when I was 17, 18, 19, eventually ran the youth club as a volunteer. And then I was, I worked in, in youth work for five years in, in running church youth clubs and stuff. Um, and so that's it's really close to my heart, youth work. I feel passionate about we need a professional youth service. We've got one in different parts of Wales, um, and I think it's a really good thing. And there's some fantastic work going on, uh, Welsh Government-sponsored work, through a body called the Wales Interim Youth Work Board. Uh, this is a really important piece of work. And Keith Towler, former Wales children's commissioner he was the second wales children's commissioner um keith towler chairs that he's a good egg keith he gets it completely comes out of practice has spent a lot of years in policy and he's now a passionate kind of children's rights um campaigner and advocate and he, he he's patron to various organizations and, and things particularly keen on the child's voice being important in policy making so he's chairing the wales interim youth work board and um one of the members of that board is Dusty Kennedy, who's a TRM Academy colleague of mine, good mate of mine, um, former boss of mine in the Youth Justice Board in Wales. So I've asked next week, Dusty, who sits on the Youth Work Board, is going to come on. Uh, we're going to try and get him into a Zoom call and then pull the Zoom call on screen um, so that you guys can just do a little quick interview. But if you've got Youth Work questions, um, please put those in the comments uh, or in the group this week. So I'll put them in these comments now. You can put them in the replay comments on YouTube or on the Trouble Kids group comments because um, I think it'd be really good to put some questions from the sector to Dusty next week. Um, so if you know youth workers or you've you've got friends who are youth workers and colleagues and things, put the word out. Get them to join, sign up to the group because uh, I'm looking forward to that. It'd be great. And Dusty and I have done a, a lot of chatting back and forth. We've done some test podcasts and things. So we're used to nattering online. So I'm quite confident we're going to have a good uh, chinwag next week. So next week, Youth Work Week. So um, I shall look forward to that. All right. So a few of you have put in the comments. Let me find the top of the comments. Scroll down. Right. Here we go. I'm going to shut my eyes while I do me. Uh, let's play the fanfare just because it makes me laugh. And then while I'm doing that, I'll shut my eyes, scroll, and then I'll tell you who's won it. All right, here we go. Do you think he looks in? We'll see. Right, Rhiannon. Now, I don't know how... Um, do you know what? I pride myself as a kind of Yorkshireman who's lived here for 30-odd years to, to my Welsh pronunciation... Well, it isn't terrible, shall we say. But I'm not sure how to do your second name, Rhiannon. Is it... I want to say Cuss. C-Y-S. Rhiannon Cuss. So I'm going to put a little heart against your comments. That'll remind me. And I'll um, I'll scribble your name on here. Um, so that I make sure I remember who's won it. And don't have to watch the video on YouTube again to remind myself. So well done, Rhiannon. So there is a, uh, a copy of this. Coming to you, it is, as I say, an absolute corker. Uh, and I, I'm probably going to give away more of Betsy's books because I think they're brilliant. And I, th I figured if it's working for me, it might work for you. So there we go. So next week, 24th of June, back here at noon, um, Youth Work Week. We are going to be talking. Oh, I didn't show you a picture of Dusty. I've got to do this just because it'll naff him off, if nothing else. Uh, there he is. <laughs> Being a dude in his tweed jacket. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's dusty. Um, so he'll be on. I'm looking forward to that very much. Don't forget to leave your comments about this um, youth work or about anything else at all that will be useful um, to you in the comments. If you are watching this on um, YouTube, just a final reminder to subscribe and let us know you're there. And in the meantime, guys, please look after yourselves. Remember, you are your clients most you are your most important client you can't do your best work unless you're on your best form so bless you 
thanks for being on i'm sorry there's been all kinds of techie troubles and the video's gone in or out but i will look forward to seeing you next wednesday on the trouble kids live stream cheers <laughs>